Jiren the Grey. Few characters in modern Dragon Ball evoke more debate, division, and conflict from their fan base than this character has done. Having only made his debut in the Dragon Ball continuity towards the beginning of 2017, Jiren has been labeled everything from boring to stoic, from laughable to exhilarating, and everything in between. So, as I always do, I took to my Twitter to put up a poll that asked the question, did you enjoy Jiren's character? The options being yes and no. In 24 hours, 3,226 votes were cast, leaving a mostly split consensus on the topic. 48% claiming they enjoyed his character, while 52 proclaimed they did not. Let me know what your thoughts are here on YouTube. Click above. But today, I will be diving deep into this volatile, contentious topic, examining the story structure of the universe survival arc, identifying where its faults lie, and taking a close look at how Jiren's character plays into the story as its antagonist and the most powerful fighter in the multiverse. To begin our deconstruction of the Jiren character, let's start with a quote from Robert McKee's book, Story. The axiom show don't tell warns against dialogue that substitutes passive explanations for dynamic dramatizations. To show means to present a scene in an authentic setting populated with believable characters struggling towards their desires. To tell means to force characters to halt their pursuits and talk instead at a length about their thoughts and feelings. What this means is, in order for your viewers to build a believable connection with your hero, it's much more effective to see him or her struggle, to see them do something courageous and brave, rather than to hear that they are struggling or brave. For example, the very first time we see Harry Potter in his first movie, he is celebrating his birthday alone, living with an abusive, selfish family sleeping in a bed under the stairs. This communicates to the viewer visually that Harry has had a hard life where he's been wrongfully told that he's unremarkable and a nuisance. But Harry, despite all of this, finds the good where he can and soldiers on. And that is character. In the very first episode of BBC's Sherlock, we are introduced to the titular character as he opens a body bag to examine it and to beat it with a writing crop before relaying specific information to the person working there to inform him how long it takes before bruises form. This communicates to us that he is eccentric, highly intelligent, and doesn't deal with human interaction gracefully. That again is character. This was the very first time we saw Jiren in Dragon Ball Super. Speaking on the topic of showing off and introducing characters and stories, Jello Apocalypse had this to say. There are only three ways you can show off your characters. What the character says, what the character does, and what others say about the character. Those are the three ways, and if you don't have them interact with anyone, the only one you get is what others say about the character, and that's the worst one of the three because a lot of it is tell don't show, which you should never do. And I can't say I disagree. Before we see Jiren, we are told that he is impossibly strong, stronger than a god of destruction, but we aren't shown this. We are instead lectured through clunky, unnatural exposition, and that's not good enough. It's giving us the information we need to understand the story, but nothing to understand his character or who he is or what he wants. The first time we're introduced to Vegeta, he is seen eating something he just killed. The first time we meet Frieza, he is slaughtering a Namekian village while smiling. And the first time we see Cell, we find that he has been preying on the local inhabitants of a city in the most terrifying of ways. Even the character of Goku Black was captivating for a number of reasons, but in addition to that, his unveiling was one of the absolute best villain debuts in the entire series. Not just Super, the entire series. Now, man. In his video discussing what makes a villain feel real, Super Eyepatch Wolf points out that the word antagonist from its Greek roots loosely translates to mean the one who initiates change. And that's the job of the antagonist in many ways, to be the one that creates the need for the protagonist to take specific action. And yet I've described Jiren as a passive antagonist. One might think that these two words should be mutually exclusive, yet here we are. He doesn't show interest in Goku or the tournament. He's there out of obligation much the same way as any of the other characters. He has no control over the situation beyond his supposed strength, which we still haven't seen, and with that reveals one of the arc's fundamental issues. There are two antagonistic forces in this arc that cannot work without the other, and neither are working together. 
And what I mean by that is, the tension that forces the conflict for this arc is the looming threat of Universe 7's destruction. And that tension comes from both the monumental task of eliminating Jiren, and the threat the two Zenos have imposed on the losers. The tension and suspense comes from both of these things together at once. Without the Zenos' threat of destroying everyone but the winner, the arc loses all of its sense of suspense and tension, because we don't have any reason to believe the other universes would do anything nefarious with the Super Dragon Balls. And on the other hand, if Jiren didn't exist, then there wouldn't be any stakes either because Universe 7 would steamroll the competition. Which means in theory there is no villain, there is technically no antagonist, the two forces that are creating the tension are not working together. So therefore, the tension is entirely circumstantial. This is an issue because defeating Jiren is made the goal of the arc and he alone isn't what creates the tension in the first place. Moriarty in Sherlock is a captivating and gripping scene stealer because he is the one that dictated the pace and conflict of the entire story up until that point. Yes, he had more power than Sherlock, much the same way Jiren has more power than Goku, but power alone does not a good character make. Moriarty was a great character because he had a motivation to create conflict that engaged with Sherlock specifically. His character was established and we knew his personality as well as the heroes. And that's the problem. Goku is just another fighter to Jiren until he is told specifically to target him by another person. Without knowing Jiren's wants, his goals, his personality, all we have to latch onto as a viewer is Goku and the rest of the established cast. I don't have anything against Jiren at this point. I don't like him or dislike him. And so, because of that, the Tournament of Power is much more like a sporting event, rooting for your team because, hey, it's the team you know, rather than an actual story with any sort of structure, tangible antagonistic force, or payoff. At least none that aren't already present in sports games. As a result of this fact, the crux of the narrative lies with Goku and friends exclusively, burdened in carrying a 54 episode long arc on their shoulders, resulting in Universe 7 not engaging with Jiren, who was established again as the goal, the major hurdle of the tournament until episode 109, a whole 13 episodes into the tournament itself. Speaking of which... <coughs> I thought Jiren was at his best when he first went up against Goku. Since the only thing established about Jiren was that he was strong, it was interesting to see how the two would initially interact with each other. Goku burning through his entire catalogue of power-ups, techniques and options in a matter of minutes against Jiren was exciting. Mostly, I think, because it was interesting to see how Goku's flat arc would react to the Jiren situation. However, due to Jiren not having enough development or established character traits to work with Goku effectively, it quickly became becomes a light show hinging on a moment worthy of its own praise, the Ultra Instinct transformation. Something Jiren didn't serve to enhance because, on top of having no established goals or charisma, he also does not emote for this either. And that's all part of a broader issue with Jiren. As John Truby wrote in his book, The Anatomy of Story, create an opponent who is exceptionally good at attacking your hero's greatest weakness. And Jiren just doesn't do that. He doesn't seem to have any interest at all in Goku. The only reason he decided in the first place to give Goku the time of day was because Belmode, his god of destruction, told him to do so specifically. There isn't a clash of ideologies. We know what Goku's character stands for and is all about, but we have no concept of what Jiren likes, thinks, cares about, or has contempt for. This story that's being told is about a tournament, a battle royale that is held by the most elite of the gods, where if you lose, you and your entire universe get wiped from existence. It's been established that Goku cares about the value of life, but it isn't found out until the end of the tournament that Jiren does not. And when that is eventually established, their fists and ideologies clash hard. Something I'd like to address as my final point when discussing this final struggle is suspense, and how it's created to work in great effect within a story. To explain how suspense is created, here is a quote from the master of suspense, Alfred Hitchcock. Four people are sitting around a table. Five minutes of it. Very dull. Suddenly, a bomb goes off. What does the audience have? Ten seconds of shock? Now, take that same scene and tell the audience there is a bomb under that table, and will go off in five minutes. Well, the whole emotion of the scene is totally different because you've given them that information. You've got the audience working. To use an example, the film Your Name utilizes this technique quite masterfully. Your Name is about two Japanese students, Taki and Mitsuha, as they switch bodies over the course of the film and ultimately fall in love. 
However, a town-shattering meteor is heading for Mitsuha's village, destined to claim her life and those living there if she doesn't evacuate herself and the town in time. Running for her life, the suspense builds as we the audience see the reflection of the meteor bounce off the lake to her left. The music swells, and then... When this happens, as a viewer you were thinking, gee, I hope you're okay and all, but seriously, get moving, there's no time! Similarly, when Frieza announced that Namek would explode in five minutes, the tension and suspense rose and came to a fever pitch near the end as Goku casually talks with Frieza before ultimately besting him and giving him his energy. The audience thinks, get moving, Goku, there's no time! Our inability to influence the course of events leads to an experience of tension, and that's how it works. In contrast, the Tournament of Power, while it has a time limit, at no point was Universe 7 numbering in the fewest members. And so, seeing as the suspense didn't come from will our heroes get the job done before the clock runs out, it becomes will they have enough stamina to wait out the clock, which is significantly less compelling. <laughs> Wanting power and strength isn't an interesting trait on its own and isn't necessarily a bad thing. But when it's made clear that Jiren values strength and power over justice and life, he becomes a villain. At the very end of the arc, for five minutes, before Goku ultimately defeats him. And he ultimately gets a redemption of sorts after hearing a pep talk from Tapo in the following episode. You see, that there is a story that's worth telling, but it should have been told over the course of the entire arc and not a single episode's runtime. There's a very strong case to be made that I'm sure many of you are considering right now that Goku is Jiren's antagonist. Goku is the one that initiates every interaction with the character. He forces him to change and forces him into really tough situations. But there's a problem with that. The story from the get-go was not set up for Jiren to be the protagonist, or even the focus really. Quite the opposite. And thus, he as a character doesn't service the narrative as effectively as he should. And that's the problem with the Tournament of Power. It isn't about a dynamic between characters. It isn't about anything other than a tournament. And that's it. Every other tournament in Dragon Ball was about something. Rich with character, development, and intrigue. So I think saying that the Tournament of Power was more like a sporting event, and not an actual story with a payoff, is accurate. It was enjoyable in parts with its own highlights for sure, but it wasn't really a story with a beginning, middle, and end. No more so than a football game is. There are many things that make this arc a difficult one to praise narratively, but my hope is that being able to identify the issues with this would-be antagonist will help you with your own writing, and hopefully to help you all to avoid making the same mistakes that led to Toei Animation creating the unsafe satisfying self-contradiction that was Jiren, the passive antagonist. Thanks for watching.